Now I hit the correct button that I was supposed to hit, Mike. Well, that's good, hitting those correct combo. buttons. That was a king combo. Did you get the king combo? I must finish this damn thing. You got it, Mike Gamble. I did, I did not finish the, the king combo. You're listening to Freelancer Codex, a podcast brought to you by the Shut Up and Respawn Network. Welcome, everyone, to episode 167 of the Freelancer Codex podcast. Today is April 7th, 2021. Tax day is quickly coming upon us. I need to get on that. I should probably have done that a while ago, but I have not, so I'm going to do it soon. Because you know what? You just got to pay your taxes. Two things are true in this life. You pay your taxes, and those console warriors will always care about what piece of plastic they bought more than their mothers. I think that's how that saying goes. Unless you're Al Capone. What does Al Capone do? Actually, he, he actually that's what he got taken down for. He got taken down for not paying his taxes, and it was an accountant that busted him. After all that he did, all of his mob stuff, tax evasion. Those tax dang fraud. accountants. I'm going to turn you up I just know, man. a tiny bit. They do it all the time. For some reason, your waveform is coming in low. Or maybe you can turn yourself up with your new fancy stuff. It is fancy schmancy. I don't know how to do it, though. I don't know. Get closer to the mic or <laughs> push a button, I guess. That looks better. Push a button that Anyway, does it. on this April the 7th, this is episode 167. It's going to be a little bit shorter of an episode. This week has been pretty hectic for me and for Mike, so we're just going to keep it short, sweet, get this thing out to you, say hi. Hopefully everyone's doing good on this week. So yeah, we're going to dive right into it. Did you know, Mike, that by my estimate, well, right now, my first estimates that were Halo Infinite was going to come out somewhere around July. Now we're thinking somewhere around November. So, if Halo Infinite comes out, let's just throw out a date, on November 21st, it's 228 days away until people can play Halo Infinite. Do you think there will be a beta for Halo Infinite? Do I think there will be a beta? I know. I don't think there will be a beta. Even for their well, multiplayer? Because multiplayer maybe is going to be, be separate. I would, I would hope that for something that's going to go, you know, multiplayer... Rusted, how's it going? Thanks for hanging out with us all the way from Japan. I would think that Microsoft and 343 Industries, with a bunch of the technical hiccups they had with shipping the Master Chief Collection, that they would want to have a beta to test their servers for that multiplayer. I think the multiplayer could potentially be even more important for Halo Infinite than the campaign, although I think the campaign is going to be very important after a lot of the backlash and complaints that we had about Halo 5 Guardians. Not a lot of people, myself included, liked playing as the Locke and um, Noble Team. Noble Team? No, it's not Noble Team. Fire Team Osiris. That's the name of it. Sorry, I just had to think of it in my head because there's a lot of fire teams in the Halo universe. I don't... So... I think multiplayer is going to be very important for that game, especially if the rumored BR is true. I don't know if it is. I don't know how they can avoid it. Halo BR would be a lot of fun, but mostly that multiplayer has got to like knock it out of the park day one. And I think they got to have a beta for it. I'd be sad if they didn't. And it is very possible that they've said that they are, but man, those Halo blog posts that they put out, they need, they just need a TLDR. So I can just say, all right, what did they talk about? Cause they talk about a lot of stuff in those things. <laughs> So I'm going to vote. I'm going to guess that there is a beta and that beta probably comes two months out. So if we go September beta for Halo Infinite, that would be pretty cool. That would get people excited about the Xbox Series X because right now, not a lot of excitement other than Game Pass, which is killing it. So yep. that's my rant on that. Which Do you think that there will be a beta fish? There will be a beta fish. There will be a master... Hey, God of War Ragnarok is also... They're saying it's going to come out this year. Which would also put it around that time. I think if you're Sony, and I'm not Sony, if you mm -hmm. wanted to com com combat the hype of Halo Infinite, God of War, or um, something like Horizon Zero Dawn, or Horizon Forbidden West, would compete with that. But I don't yeah. know. All eyes will be on Microsoft at the end of this year. We do know that E3 has been greenlit as for a digital event. Do they show something at E3 this year? I'm not sure. That's kind of like they could show something, but what if it gets delayed again and pushed back? Phil Spencer definitely feels like he is not scared of um, pushing something like Halo back, especially with everything that's coming to Xbox Game Pass, even PlayStation titles like MLB The Show. So right. if they do have to push it back and you show it during E3 and you're like, this is coming, 
and then you're like, oh, it's not. I don't know. That's kind of like a, a two-edged, a double-edged sword, a two-edged blade. What's the saying? A, a two-edged sword? Yeah. It's a double-edged sword, right? Because most swords have two edges. That's not even true. That's not well, true. Katanas I guess they kind of do. They have like edges. a right edge and a left edge, but some have a front edge and a back edge. So. I don't think that's sword terminology or technology at all. I think you're just making that up. But it makes sense. I mean, you understood. You followed it. I didn't really because some swords <laughs> only have one edge. I'm pretty sure. But but all swords have a right and a left to it. A right there's and a right left? Side of the, there's a right side of the blade and a left side of the blade. Truly, you have a dizzying intellect. Wait till I get going. Yeah. So with E3 coming digital, I would hope that Microsoft... What? Is, we're not going to E3 this year? We're not going Man. to E3 this year. Like, I'm kind of sad. Do you think it really will be digital? Like, solely digital? Because stuff um, is yeah. opening up. Yeah, they've already announced that it's going to be a digital event. Um, um, they said it's not going to be behind a paywall. Stuff is opening up, but with something like E3, I think you really have to get the ball rolling like very, very early because of how big of an event it is. I don't think yeah. they're like, hey, it's in June. Let's make plans now because you got people have to get demos ready and booths constructed and all kinds of stuff um russet says nice on the princess bride uh, reference we could do I princess like bride references all day long all day we all could just day. we could just start we, reciting we, the movie we actually can we can <laughs> i don't know if that's a good thing <laughs> i don't know i enjoy that movie i, think I enjoy it a lot as far it's as awesome. movies goes it's one of the better ones so absolutely yeah my one of my my youngest son is named after a character from the princess bride so that's how is much he named is he like named after that character yeah he's named after wesley that's awesome i yeah. thought it was another video game reference but no it's the man in black uh, no not all of my kids are named after video game references only really only carter is logan's named after wolverine isn't he yeah but that's comics <laughs> that's awesome so yeah that's com. it's more comics because logan is named after wolverine carter is named after um carter from halo reach and then wesley's named after the man in black so does your wife know this oh yeah she totally knows this this was these were and we're like yep that's what it is and she was okay with them they're at least like normal names right it's not like hey this is master chief lee lampson <laughs> that would be weird if we just started calling him master chief I don't know. Like, Master Chief. I don't know, man. I uh I've had a cup I've had some interesting names at school. It's fun being a teacher because there are some interesting names out there. I bet there is. So my names are so when you think of mom and dad, like our mom and dad, like zero creativity at all. Like dad was like, What are the most common names you've ever heard in your life? And I need five of them right now. He like looked on a list. This is like pre-internet. So there must have just been like this book, right? It's like most common boy names. And he just went down the list and that's how it went. And it works. Like it works. We're we're it we we enjoy our names. I don't think any of us are like, I hate my name. So Do we enjoy your names? Is that like something you can enjoy? Yeah, it's one of the most common names ever, and I enjoy it. That's like, well, well, it's funny because, and it's funny that we're talking about this um, because we just had a conversation today at lunch and there's a couple of people on my team who actually dislike their names. Um, what, our music teacher is, is younger, but was given a very old and I, and oh. I have to be careful. Is it Gertrude? It's not Gertrude, but it's Cheryl. And she, she kind of, it bugged her in high school because everybody at that time, and she's she's old enough to where everybody was Ashley and Brittany and Justin, uh -huh. and she was Cheryl, and, and she kind of was bugged by that. Why? So, That's a weird thing to be bugged by. Well, and, and we're allowed to say that because we weren't bugged by our names. I guess that's true. If if we were bugged by our names, then we'd be like, man, why did they why did they name us that? Because like I said, as a teacher, you get to come across some interesting names. Parents are choosing some interesting names and interesting spellings for names. Oh, um, talk, I, talking about people in our family that have to add a Y to everything. <laughs> but hey, that's fine. That's cool. Yeah. It's different. So you, if you yeah. enjoy your name. I I guess I have no 
reference whether I enjoy my name or not. So it's just a name. I'm going to go ahead and say that you do enjoy it because you don't not enjoy it. I guess I, I, I don't know how like you I say, said, hey, this is, this really is one of those things that like, if you don't, then you're going to be really like, I don't like being called this. It's something I guess I never so. thought about, but my kids are always like, can I change my name? I go, what do you want to change it to? High spirit 2000. It's like, go to bed. Okay. <laughs> Get out of here. Like, don't they even want a that gamer question. tag for their name. Yeah. They just want to be esports people i guess i was like whatever dude like go away well they can do that without changing their name yeah and i would suggest that if they do become an esport person that they do use a pseudonym and not their regular name yeah don't use those regular names speaking of regular names that continue to support the show we would like to thank our patrons because they are the best everyone else you're cool too but our patrons they're pretty cool so let's thank Julius, Nathan B, Michael R, Trent B, Man in Steel, Scout 69, Dragonheart 76, Jeffrey H, The Gameplay Experience, RZ, and Phaedron. Thank you so much for your continued support of this random show of two brothers talking about nonsense. If you would like to continue to support that nonsense, you can do that <laughs> at Patreon, patreon.com slash freelancer codex. So, and if you want to continue to support us, like tell your friends, say, hey, I listen to the show with two brothers and they don't talk about anything. It's a but, show about nothing. But not really like two brothers, like two brothers. <laughs> Not to be confused <laughs> with two brothers. We, in fact, are just two brothers. We're not two brothers. Yeah. So we we're want... Not, we're not brothers in like the... I don't know if colloquial is the right word, but yeah. Anyway, anyway, <laughs> anyway. Steve, what you been up to this week, man? I... Oh, you want me to kick this off? Like this is... Yeah, why not? This is You're interesting. Of. Am I really? I will tell nah. you what I've been up to. You don't. You don't hate your name, so you must be... You must be actually kind of bland because that means you kind of have just a I think run of the mill name. My name is like um, stop signs. They're just kind of there. So I don't <laughs> dislike or in actually like stop signs. They're just part of things. And that's what my name is. So um, I've actually been up to a lot of stuff. This has been a pretty busy week for me work wise, for me family wise. We did not get to dive into the um, huge breakdown that I do for the episodes of Falcon and the Winter Shoulder. Shoulder, man, I can't say this word. Soul, the winter shoulder, the winter shoulder. It's so cold on my shoulder. Maybe oh, that should be the that's, show. That's the next time our wives get mad at us, we're gonna say, Calm down, winter soldier. Shoulder, <laughs> it's like the cold shoulder. <laughs> yeah, I get it. I totally get it. We just renamed the show anyway. So, there's been a lot going on. So, I will tell you about some of the things that I have been doing. So since I've started running again, because it is warmed up a little bit so I can go outside and not freeze my stuff off, I have to, I keep having to remember that there are young kids that listen to the show. So I need to like watch my language. So I'm going to try to do that better. So I've been watching, um, the Amazon prime video exclusive show called invincible. Now invincible is a cartoon, an animated um, series based on the comic work of Robert Kirkman, who also did the Walking Dead series. Invincible is about a young superhero who is gaining his powers and kind of navigating the world. There are currently four episodes out as of today. I've been really enjoying the show. Uh, the show, I don't think, is, is not for younger people. So just because it's animated, I don't think along the lines of Rick and Morty. It's probably calmer than Rick and Morty. It's pretty bloody, though. So. Don't let Kai watch it. That's what I'm saying. I've really been enjoying it. I've not read the comics for Invincible. I think after the series is done, I'll go read those because I don't want to like start the comics now and be like, then I'm going to be critiquing what's different about it. But I'm really enjoying That's the show. That's not what happened. That's not what happened. Yeah. I'm really enjoying Invincible. It's interesting. Um, the animation, is. it reminds me of a little bit of batman the animated series except it's a lot more colorful than that but for some reason i don't know if it's just like the 24 frames a second or whatever it's shot in but it gives me those vibes um but it's it's cool there's it's got a huge um cast of famous people that are in it um j jonah jameson plays the the dad and it's a it's an interesting story so far and i am excited to keep watching it all right also That's awesome 
So that, that's kind of one of the things I've been doing. Um, I've also jumped back into Rocket League because I picked it up on the Switch. It's free to down. It's free to play now. Rocket League has gone through a lot of changes since we've stopped playing. I think we played last time we played. We like we're never playing this game together because none of us could like stay back and actually you defend the ball. You would never stay back. Well, you would never hey, score. Steve, I'm, so. I'm going forward. Uh, hey Steve, they scored. How they score? I went forward. <laughs> uh, Rocket League is very much like real soccer to where like sometimes you just need that star player to go win the game or else you're never going to win the game. And sometimes you just <laughs> got to take a chance. So um, back into Rocket League, playing that on the Switch. I finally told the kids that I got a Switch. I'm using that as motivation nice. for them to learn the piano because every time they're on the piano, I say, all right, 15 minutes of practice. And they try to they, they always figure out a way to talk to me for 14 minutes and practice for one. And I'm just like, hey, you guys want to play this thing? You guys learn five songs, come talk to me, and then we'll talk about playing the Switch. Um, so that's one of the things I've been doing. Mike, I don't know that's if cool. you've heard of this movie um, called God- Godzilla. Back in 1998, Matthew Broderick um, did a movie with Godzilla, which I thought was actually a really, um, a really good game. It's true, well, Rusted. My kids it are wasn't crafty. a game. It was a movie. But no, but not only was game. it Matthew, not, well, not only was it Matthew Broderick, but it was also Hank Azaria. Yep. And first time, like, let's see, Godzilla video game. I bet there was a video game based on this. How much do you want to bet? Think um, so? Yeah. Let's say it probably released 1998. Probably it's one of those movie tie-in games, and it's probably for the GameCube. Nope. Look, PlayStation. Yep, it came out on the PlayStation. A list of Godzilla games. I don't want to do that. There's probably a billion of them because of where that franchise comes from. Anyway, I watched Godzilla vs. Kong. Spoiler alert for Godzilla vs. Kong. If you, <laughs> I don't know what you can spoil about this show. I'm just going to say I will give you my brief synopsis of it. I would have rather have been hit by a bus <laughs> than spend the time watching the show. But I did. I watched watching- it. That's it's funny. um it's bad man. is it everything that you would expect is it like okay yeah i know what's coming next okay so let, let's let's do this michael list something that you would think would happen in a movie titled godzilla versus kong and i'll tell you if it was in there or not okay um so i'm just gonna go monster monster focused right so yep. godzilla is going to come out of water yep that happens okay King Kong is going to bang his chest and yell. Yeah, that happens. Um, let's see. What else? What are some of the other Godzilla tropes? You're going for like easy. Um, these are like slow. Yeah, these are like here. these are like knock out of the park ones, but um let's see. Cause it because I bet there were a ton of like, yep, movie trope. Um miscommunication <laughs> is gonna make the uh the human antagonists do you know Oh yeah. So have- the this is like a two and a half hour movie, and humans take up two hours of this movie, Mike. Oh boy! And the plots for the humans are dumber than anything you could have thought of, and it's like it was pretty dumb. We it was pretty. Oh, dumb. I also like, this I also heard not that, good. that kind of near the climax, Godzilla and Kong actually band together to fight something or someone else so my wife and i like i don't watch trailers for anything so 20 minutes in kong and godzilla blah 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 before they even meet i look over and say (laughs) they're gonna team up together and they're gonna fight mecha godzilla and that happens so and for i don't know man like i don't know why people can't just like write a movie and be like what are the things that make godzilla and kong cool it's like big stompy dinosaur fighting a big stompy stompy ape which like kong is like pretty lame in my opinion Uh as far as monsters go but that would be the cool thing just to see that happen but then they're like what if we have the humans talk (laughs) for the majority (laughs) of the movie what if we do that instead and i'm like oh my gosh man like if there were buses running in this town i would just like all right push me in front of a bus (laughs) anyway so i watched that and it was bad i do not recommend it like i think if if you want something to just like fall asleep to and maybe like have a spectacle of monsters fighting maybe watch it but i cannot safely or in good conscience recommend this movie to anybody that has a pulse to anybody please don't watch this movie godzilla I mean, and kong we're gonna give them two big thumbs down from oh, the freelancer codex also i did not watch this in theaters i watched it on hbo max 
Okay, so a couple other things before I get into other stuff. Um, the Nate Bergazzi special is really funny. I think you guys, everyone should watch that. My wife and I watched it last night. We laughed a lot. It was really hilarious. Um, Narita Boy. So last week I said I had purchased Narita Boy on the Switch. I was going to play it. And I will report that I have played Narita Boy, Narita Boy a lot. And it is a super fun game. I enjoy this. This game is like a 2D action platformer. Um, they say it has some Metroidvania aspects to it, but I don't think it has enough to classify it as a Metroidvania. I think it's more action platformer. There's backtracking. I think that might be the only reason we can call it a Metroidvania. There are some secrets you can track down, but like I don't, I don't think it touches that genre in the way that people want it to. It's a super fun game. I am close to beating it. I haven't finished it all the way. I'm close to the end. I'm enjoying it a lot. Like so far, it's probably on my, I don't know if it's the top game of the year for me. I really, really like it though. Um, Because I I can't say Hades and I can't say Control this year. So this year I'm going to say so far it's Narita Boy before I play anything else. It's a super cool game. It's stylized so cool. Like it's Tron and there's you're inside this computer and all the programs are like religious zealots praising the creator and one of the things that i don't like about the game i'll talk about a couple things like navigation there's no map which makes navigation difficult sometimes you have to backtrack to a place you're like where is this because every time a character talks to you they tell you that they're the trichoma of the trifecta to the diblop in the ski lap and you're like where is that and they continue talking and dropping all these like um nouns of like places you're supposed to go and things you're supposed to get and you're like i have no idea what that means i have i haven't seen a sign for that like i have no idea where i'm supposed to go they could just tell you but instead it's like oh praise the he that created the and you're like what is going on like i think style style wise it's super cool but like sometimes but too many like, nouns yeah sometimes like i have to do what i think and then i'm just like i'm just gonna run to the right until i can't run to the right and then i'll run to the left until i can't run to the left if there's enemies i'll know that i'm on the right track but the game is super cool and i'm really enjoying it so also nice it's free on game pass if you want to try it out well then you should totally try it out if it's free on game pass everyone should um, yeah, so, why not? So game You're not wise, missing out on anything. So game-wise, that's what I've been doing. But then I've also been diving into the world of cryptocurrency. So oh, I nice. jumped on early to the whole Safe Moon crypto coin, and I finally bought into that. Um, setting up the wallet for crypto coins is easy. But trying to get money into your wallet in order to buy cryptocurrency was a huge pain because I went through Binance. So I learned about the thing a month ago when they were first talking about it, and the price was like super, super cheap. It was like one billionth of a, of a cent or whatever. I'm like, if I get in now, I will get a lot for a little. And even <laughs> if it goes up a little, that's some gain. And you can't drop gain, right? you can't drop below zero, I think. Maybe you can. I'm not sure. <laughs> but like signing up for Binance, putting in all my information, having to get approved, and waiting – a week and a half for that, putting money into it, and then having my funds tied up for like two weeks. And I'm like, by the time this happens, it's going to like jump up to where like I'm not going to be able to buy in at the price I want and you kind of lose out. Right. So so anyway, I've got in. We're going to wait for that thing to go up. So in eight years, I'll report back on that. Um, in eight years. Yeah. So I'll actually. <laughs> How gonna, long did it take uh, Bitcoin to get up where it is? It's been eight years about for Bitcoin, I think. Oh, that's it? Yeah. I, I could have sworn it was like 12 or 13. No, it's it's been about eight years. I can confirm. I don't know if, who's going to hold our feet to the fire on this. Yeah, I mean, I don't even, like, like you gave me the number of eight, and I'm okay with that. So Yeah, I, mean, I could I lie to you, and, like, what are you going to start? Um, 2000 exactly. And, I'm not going to look it up. Yeah. I'm watching baseball. 2009. So January 9th, 2009. Oh, nice. Release version 0.1 of Bitcoin. Um, so yeah, we got into that. So I'm going, I sent some coins to, I'm going to be sending coins to you guys just so you guys have some in case it blows up. Since I know none of you guys are smart enough to figure out how to add money. Well, you you told me that I couldn't and there's another app and money tied up and you know, so. Well, this way I will send it to you and you'll have it. And if it does something, Plus I'm still, I'm still trying to get over the last, uh, finance tip you gave. 
you know what? That tip was good. <laughs> if you would have gotten out at the top, it would have been a wonderful tip. But you didn't. I am not a financial advisor in no way or form. So in please. In no way. Yeah. In no form. Yeah. So this week I'm going to finish Narita Boy and hopefully become a millionaire. So that's what I've been up to. Mike, what have you been well, up to? Well, there you go. Just a few plans. So I also watched the Netflix Nate Bargatze special. And and if you do like to laugh, like he is definitely he is definitely one that makes me laugh. Go check out Nate Bargatze. And he's got a few specials out, plus he's got a couple records out. So he's he's pretty good. Um Did you just call it a record? Yeah. It's a record. I don't think it's those a are record. Coming, those are coming back, man. I don't um think so. album? Album? Comedy album? I did get some new audio hardware. I am sporting now the Elgato Wave 3 system with shock mount and pop filter. Um, I like it a lot. Very clean, very crisp. But was not was not super excited with the um, the way that my Blue Yeti had been holding up. If any of you have a Blue Yeti, you know that their USB is something to be desired. Um, you. It's one of those USBs that you look at funny and the and it just bends and breaks and not so good. My headphone jack was getting fuzzy. You had to spin it and hold it just the right way to get good connection. Um, so now I got the Elgato Wave 3, which uses USB-C, which I think is a sturdier, more secure connection. Has the ability to monitor your, your audio, which is a big for me because um, I use headphones. And so I want to be able to hear what I'm saying to kind of help meter and monitor um, what I'm doing in my own voice. Plus, I really like the look of it. It's sleek, it's compact, it, it's light. There aren't too many things going on. And so far, I enjoy it. It fits on my, fits on my boom arm that I'm using, and I enjoy it quite a bit. Um, spring, um, I almost said spring training. Um, opening day was April 1st since we've recorded last. So we're back into the regular season of baseball. I enjoy watching baseball. I enjoy watching baseball with my boys and playing baseball with them. And so that's kind of a big thing. I've been thinking about trying to get to a couple games this summer just to, to say that we did because I enjoyed I enjoyed going to the games that we went to when we went down for EA play in California and, and excited for that. It's just a great experience hanging out with the boys. They're old enough now to where they can kind of understand things. They're invested a little bit because they're playing baseball and, and hopefully we can get closest team for us is actually in Phoenix, Arizona which isn't terrible. Phoenix is a great place. We have a brother down there that we could is it a great hang out place? with. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's not a bad place. I don't think, I don't think anything terrible is going on. In Phoenix. Um, heat, it's just... heat. It's hotter than, it's hotter than every other place in the entire world. So the Diamondbacks play in a dome, which mm -hmm. means it's air conditioned. So is that's it? not going to be an issue. Um, or we could go, we could go to Denver, which is, it's about the same distance. We're kind of right in the middle of those guys. So we can either go to a dome where it's super hot or we can go to an outside stadium where, and in the wind, in the summer in Denver, it's actually not that bad. Evenings are quite pleasant. So I guess it depends on who the opposing team is. Cause I don't have too much affinity for the Diamondbacks or the Rockies. Um, I do like watching the angels and, um, I like most of the teams that I like watching are in the East, mainly the, uh, Yankees and the Red Sox, which I know is not, you're not supposed to, you're not supposed to like both of them, but I do. Um, I enjoy watching both of them and I get to like both of them because I'm from New Mexico and we don't have a team. And, and like I said, the closest team we have is, is a state away. So what if, I enjoy watching them. What if we just moved out of New Mexico? Um, it definitely is looking like that. Um, one of the things that I was talking to my wife about is that if I if we do move, I'd like to move somewhere that has the big three. So I'd like to be able to go somewhere where there's a baseball team, a football team, and a basketball team. How many just so that those have that? options are available? How many cities? Yeah, there are there are actually believe it or not not that many. Seattle has a football team, a basketball team, and a um, baseball team. They also actually have a soccer team, which would be fun too. Um, Arizona has football, basketball, and baseball. They have the Cardinals, the Diamondbacks, and the Suns. Do you want to know Most who has the big four and not just the big three? So the big four, I can I can probably tell you. Wait, I can probably right. tell you. All right. So the big four is going to be L.A. They've got the they've got the yep. Clippers, the Lakers. 
they have the Rams. Yeah. They have the Dodgers Sorry. and the Ra- and the um, Angels. And their hockey team are the Anaheim Ducks. They play at the Honda Center. Uh-huh. Um, the other they city to have, have the big four. So the other city to have the big four is going to be Boston. Hold they on, have, hold they have on. the Celtics. For LA. Hang on. No, I'm, you, I'm no, on a roll. You missed. Did your, I miss one? Yeah. For LA, you missed the Chargers and the Los Angeles Kings. So the, LA has eight. No, hang teams. on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. I'm not hanging the on. LA Kings are, the LA Kings are a hockey team, and yes, yeah. I did forget them, but the Chargers are not in LA anymore. They're what? down in San Diego. How long is this list? Well, San Diego, wait, LA, that's like an hour away. They wait continue. a second, wait a second, wait a second. They I actually think they moved the Chargers, I think, did move to LA. Yeah, it says they they moved to the LA here. So yeah, I think, I think you're right now that I say that because I think I'm right. they didn't move out of San Diego. They have eight teams, eight teams in LA. That's a big area. That's a big area. I also believe the uh, I also believe the um, San Francisco. San Francisco has the 49ers, the Giants. They do. Need, th- yeah. Is is there a hockey team? Do they have the Big Four? Um, they don't have the Giants. Uh, baseball Giants, baseball. Oh yeah. They have, do, they have, do they have a hockey team? Do they have a big four? They do. They have the San Jose Sharks. There you go. So they've there got you go. the Golden so that, State and, Warriors. And that area that area also has the Oakland Athletics. That is correct. They, yeah. they used to have the Oakland Raiders. And they um, no longer do. Right? And then, and then Boston has a big four. New yep. York has a big four. New York actually has nine different teams. They do. Um, so we'll add the the uh, New York Football Club and the New York Red Bull are there also. Their MLS soccer. They've got two baseball teams. They've got two football teams. They, they have, have the Brooklyn two hockey Nets. teams. Two what? Two hockey teams. The Rangers and the. They have the oh, so they've got the New York Islanders, then the New York Rangers, Islanders. and then they have the New Jersey Devils. Oh wow, they have three. Dang. Dang. Yeah, so but I don't know if we could live in New York. That's a lot of people. Although it would be fun to live there for a little bit. It would be fun to live in Boston. Um Texas definitely has quite a few teams. I don't know if any Texas cities have the big four. I know three of them have the big three. No, I closed my browser, so my knowledge is all good. That's gone okay. Now. That's okay. I don't that that doesn't hurt my feelings at all. Um, other than that, not a whole lot going on in my life. Um, the wind is blowing, which means allergies are in full swing, and I'm finding that half of my kids have um, pretty severe allergies. So we we take our allergy pill in the morning together. It's like a thing now that we do. So there that you sounds go. fun. The family that takes allergy medicine together stays together. <laughs> all right, let's jump into the news. All right, I gotta talk to you about something. This just in, Rare Super Mario Brothers cartridge sells for $660,000, the highest price ever for a video game. Not only is this the finest plastic sealed copy with the perforated cardboard hang tab we've ever offered of any black box title, it's also the oldest sealed copy of Super Mario Bros. we have ever had the opportunity to offer, This is only the fourth version of Super Mario Bros. ever produced, and its window of production was remarkably short. Just to paint a better picture of how short this really was, the nationwide release for the console came in mid to late 1986, and Black Box Game Distribution for the release did not have the Game Pack NES GP code. It's worth mentioning that Nintendo managed to add the trademark symbol to the Nintendo Entertainment System on their game boxes by the beginning of 1987, and this is a blurb from Polygon. So... As we, the craze of Pokemon cards, baseball cards, um, everything's been ramping up. Now this very rare copy of Super Mario Brothers sells for this amount. Like it got me thinking, like previously we talked about, hey, what are we going to start like trying to save from our, from now that would really get us into like, hey, what will be worth something? We talked about um, pop, um, we forgot that then, I'm going to forget it now. Vinyl bobblehead pop toys. Oh, pop toys? Pop caps, um, wait pop for toys. it. I think they're called pop toys. I don't know what they're called. Anyway, so do you have anything, Mike? Pop art. Do you, 
do you have anything that you think is like worth big money that you've been like holding on to? Like, are you a pack rat? Do you hold on to a lot of stuff from your childhood? Um, so I used to, I used to hold on to a lot of stuff and then like got married, got a house and like, oh, I don't need this stuff anymore. Um, and then got rid of it. I, I don't really regret the stuff that I got rid of because it probably wasn't in a good enough condition anyway to like, it wasn't mint in box, like, like you, what you really need in order to, to make this kind of money. But we've had this conversation before and, and we landed on like, I don't think stuff is being produced now that that has that ability to last. Everything is just made to be broken and just cheapo. And so like what, we talked about cars maybe being something that's gonna be something that's collectible, but I don't know anybody who's sitting on a, you know, 2000, 2001 Prius and like is ready for it to like make money and turn profit. So I think, I think like if we talk about video games, um, cause I know like Devin would buy two copies of halo and leave one sealed and play the other one. So he has like a sealed copy of the original halo. I wonder if something like that would be worth anything because it's not like you can play it because eventually like those servers will be shut down and who's going to own an Xbox uh, in order to play that. But I guess and with that, everything going digital now. Well, I guess it could be, I mean, it could be said the same thing for this copy of Super Mario Brothers. Like, that game is digital. Like, how many people are going to, like, op- no one's going to open that up and put it in to play it, right? So it's not like right. anyone needs to open it up. So if you had an original copy of Halo Combat Evolved, I mean, potentially it could be worth something to a collector. Especially if yeah. everyone's like, oh, this is like, oh, to fill out my collection of sealed copies of the game, like maybe potentially it could go that high in like 40 years from now. Someone could be like, hey, this is my sealed in box copy of Halo Combat Evolved. Maybe it could go for something like that. Maybe those are the things that we need to be like banking. Or maybe it's all just going to be like, you know, the digital art that people are doing now with their non fungible tokens that are going to be super rare and super popular. Because you're going to have a VR headset on and you're like, this is the digital art that I bought. Look at this. And you invite everyone <laughs> to your digital like museum or whatever. But So on top of this, so the grading card company um, PSA has halted service during the Pokemon sports card rush because they have received too many cards in order to go through them all. And I'll read this. This is also from Polygon. And I thought this was interesting because I had found some old Marvel cards I purchased back in 1993 that I have that are still in really good condition. And some of those on eBay were like selling for really high prices. So I was like, okay, I need to get these graded so I know um, what they're worth. And I kind of like did the research trying to figure out, okay, how do you get them graded? How much does it cost? And it kind of ended up like feeling like a scam to me because in order for your cards to be graded like to a certain price, you have to pay more per grading instead of saying, hey, what's this card worth? And you're like, hey, it's worth $100. Now pay me $10. It's like, it's worth $100,000. Pay me $10,000. So I was like, shouldn't the grading just be the grading? Because then you could just like, pay more but if you don't then it, it's weird anyway this is what um the website psa says um the sheer volume of orders that psa received in early march has fundamentally changed our ability to service the hobby psa president steve sloan wrote in a statement to consumers the reality is that we recently received more cards in three days than we did during the previous three months even after the surge submissions continue at never before seen levels PSA said it will be unable to accept new cards for this foreseeable future, even after a price increase for the service. Sloan said the company will introduce, reintroduce the service in tiers, with all services back by July 1st. Prior to this change, people were able to fill out forms online and then package up and ship their cards to PSA for grading. Service is suspended. Here's the kicker. That continues to make me think it's all just a scam. Service is suspended for cards valued up to $2,499. So the good news is, if you've got a card worth more, you can still get it rated through the upper tiers, which can cost up to $10,000 for the service. 
Wow. So it's like, should there just be a list then that I can see, okay, this card that I have should be worth this much money. So I kind of have an idea of like, if I need to pay $10,000 to have it graded. Otherwise, it's just kind of like, it just seems really weird to me, like the it's price structured that way. But that's, I don't know, maybe I'm just like reading too much into it. Well, I mean, it is suspect. You're like, yeah, this this card is worth so much. Now you have to give me more of it, you know? So, yeah, just there should be a flat fee, right? If you want to use my service, it's $20 and I grade your cards. So, yeah, it doesn't make a lot of sense. I guess, yeah, I'm just trying to figure out like what other, and there's probably other industries that have like some sort of scheme, like not, I shouldn't say scheme, but like a pricing <laughs> scheme. It sounds like a scheme to me. Where it's like, all right, this is the flat rate. Like if you take in a diamond ring and you're like, can you tell me how much this is worth? Like, I guess to a pawn shop, right? It's like, well, it's worth, how much do you think it's worth? And then I'll tell you how much it's worth. It's, it's really, exactly. maybe that's not a good, um, good example, but I got nothing. All right. So as we move <laughs> on in the news, there's a new patch that's come out for Cyberpunk 2077. That's still a game that's out um, this year. Um, I don't think I'm ever going to go back to that game to even see if what the patch has changed, but that's a thing that's come out. I know CD Projekt Red has come out saying that they're not going to have a launch like this again. They're going to do some stuff internally to try and figure that out to prevent it from happening, but you know, it's the game industry. So people like money and they like hype. So they're going to try to hype this stuff up. They did say that they're not going to talk about a game this early since they were been talking about cyberpunk for like for forever it seems like and then when it does come out everyone's disappointed because everything that they said and everything that everyone had on record and it was like this is what you said this is what we got so they're not going to do that anymore also mike in the since this has been happening a lot lego the star wars um skywalker saga is going to be delayed from spring to sometime in the future we don't exactly know when that's going to be, but Lego Star Wars is going to be delayed. Because that was something that oh, my man. kids were looking forward to. Um, yeah. Because they love the Lego games. They, the Lego games are fun. We enjoy all of them. Um, they're super fun. They, uh, they're they mixing two things that we really like. And so, yeah, I enjoy the Lego games. Cool. All right. So now let's go ahead and we're going to move on to something that we like to do. We're going to rank some stuff. So are you ready, Michael? to rank some more Marvel MCU villains. Do you want to I do that? Absolutely, I'm absolutely ready. I got a bug on my in my booth. That's weird. All right, so the last time we ra- we've ranked, and these are the rankings we currently have, we have Rocket Raccoon as number one, Gamora as number two, Hawkeye as number three, and The Incredible Hulk as number four. And this time we're ranking some villains. So I went to Twitter and I said, hey, who's the better MCU villain? Is it Iron Monger, Iron Monger Obadiah Stane, who's the original villain? <laughs> Munger? Did Munger. you just say Munger? Munger. 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 Iron Munger. What'd I say? What'd you say? You <laughs> said Munger. Obadiah Stane, Iron the Munger. original villain of the MCU, or Adrian Toomes, the vulture from the Spider-Man film. So I took the poll over to Twitter, and Michael, you can probably guess what Twitter said. What do you think Twitter said? Twitter said that the vulture was the better of the two. Of course you did, because that's the thing that you would say. So what do you think? Do you have like any like villain that you're like, oh, this villain really stands out from the MCU? Unfortunately, no, right? Because because then you have to start talking about, all right, because everybody wants to say that Loki is the best villain, but then we realize that, yeah, he's not a villain though, right? So there's another category. So it's tough because because the villains that we like are the ones who last through multiple movies. Um and so they, they don't really they don't really fit into this into this mode. So we do have to pick the villains that are just the one offs, right? Um, I of these two, I think the Vulture is right near the top of my villain list. I think it's because Michael Keaton did a great job um, as the Vulture. Um, he it, he just gave a great performance, and I really like the Vulture. I. Um, oh shoot, I just lost his name. I pictured his face. I lost it. Red Skull. I don't know how I could lose him. Red Skull was an okay villain. I liked him. I like, um, Hugo Weaving. I, I, 
I like Hugo Weaving and how he how he portrayed him. I I enjoyed that. It wasn't terrible. Um, some of the other villains, though, Steve, are just so Forgettable. throwaway and one dimensional. And and again, that's that's why they're in that category. Um, so because you can kind of put you can kind of put Nebula in a villain role up into a point. You put you put Loki in that role, uh, up into a point. Um, who else is there? Uh, Michael B. Jordan. A lot of people said that his that his villain was the best. His portrayal of Killmonger. I forget what his name was, um, but his villain his villain was Killmonger. Or yeah. what that was that his last name? Anyway, yeah, I don't think you have um, a name Killmonger, but. Yeah. yeah. So on this list, uh, uh, we have this, yeah. In this in this matchup, I definitely would pick the Vulture over Obadiah Stane, who really was, who really, I mean, he was written to be a one-off villain because we didn't know that they didn't know that the movies were going to take off like they did, right? So right. so that's kind of like he was kind of written to a corner that way. Um, but really, I I don't think any of the Iron Man villains are are very good. So when Actually, we, as we talk about Adrian Toomes and the Vulture, he will probably come back in some capacity in a Spider-Man movie. We, I hope he does anyway, because I thought he's eventually in the comics. He's part of the Sinister Six, and the Vulture is just kind of always there. All right, so we know that the Vulture is going to win this pretty easily, um, because you're right. I don't think the MCU does villains very well for the most part. Yeah. So where do we put Obadiah Stane? Does Obadiah Stane go below the Hulk or above the Hulk? Oh, we're putting him on the same list. We're not going to create a villain list nope. and a. This is a MCU a character list. ranking. So where does where I, does Obadiah stand? I think go? he I think he goes below all of the characters that we have ranked so far. All right. So so far, Obadiah Stane is the worst character that we have. So then, where do we place the Vulture? That's going to be interesting to to discuss. He did a did a did he a, has did to a, go da. above the Hulk for sure. He has to go above the Hulk. And again, like I'm never going to be able to look at this list properly because you have Gamora and Hawkeye in the wrong spot and Rocket, uh -huh. actually. Uh -huh. Yeah. It's a very and short so, list. There's only six people on it, so it'll definitely change. So where do we put it's the what? Vulture? It's a very short list, and things will change as we grow, so you might learn to like the list. but um, I won't because I, always, because I have Hawkeye above Gamora and Rocket. So you might not ever like it anyway, but that I doesn't won't matter like because the people have chosen and you have to go with what the people say. So if we put... No, I don't. Yeah, you do. And you just did. So the vulture, I think, helps the vulture make... goes. The vulture goes number four because he's not better than Hawkeye. <sighs> you're, you're like a Hawkeye stand for some reason and you got like a... Um, I really, I really like. I, I really like Hawkeye in fingers. Age of Ultron. He was just funny. Yeah, but I, I think I think the Vulture helps make um, Spider-Man: Homecoming, and I think that movie is. Oh, is, I, absolutely! The movie isn't what it is without without Michael Keaton. Obviously, could you say um, that about any movie that Hawkeye is in? Oh yeah, like all of them. Like which one? Like because Age of Ultron is pretty bad. No, you bad. can you can so say does... that you can say that he's not. Oh, I see. Like you could have taken you, you could take Hawkeye that. out of all of them, and been like, okay, yeah, it, it still works. Right, but if you took because even out though he had some of the most funny worked. lines, he didn't really do anything that like that like superly impacted the story. Right, like he didn't. Right. So, so. does he get dinged because of that? Because the vulture, yeah, I think so. Like, if I have to look at this list objectively, then the vulture probably goes above Hawkeye. Thanks for making me cave. And you don't have to and cave. again, I'm with, just asking with you Gamora, questions with Gamora, may, well, maybe. I mean, if Gamora is taken out of um, Infinity War, like that movie changes, so she's got a pretty big impact on the things that she does. But the same with Hawkeye, I mean, yeah. Hawkeye was there so. I will I will do this. I will say we're gonna put the vulture under Hawkeye. He's still I mean he's still top four in our list, so that's nothing to be ashamed of, making top four of our list. Well, but but again, when there's only six people in the list and, and we haven't even talked about the big characters yet, like like he's gonna fall. But like you said, Marvel has a hard time writing villains. Um 
as we'll talk about as we as we look into episode three of the hunter and the, the hunter the uh, falcon and the winter soldier they have a hard time writing villains either yeah they, well, they i don't know if they've gotten a villain right so far let's go ahead and i i do like i do like matt damon's portrayal of loki though very that good. was you that agree. was pretty good i agree with you so let's go ahead and dive into it to our talk of falcon and the winter soldier rule number two what was rule number two Nobody gets hurt. It's a big one. And why isn't there rule number one? I always <laughs> wanted to be an Avenger. Oh, man. It's a dream come true, you know? <laughs> we need someone to inspire us again. Someone who can be a symbol for all of us. We need new heroes. All right, so real quick, everyone, because I have, did not have enough time to go through my deep dive and breaking down everything and pulling out a bunch of clips, we're going to kind of just do a bigger overview of episode three of Falcon and the Winter Soldier. And also because I didn't like this episode, like very yeah. much. Like I, I don't, it didn't feel like it did much for me at all. Story wise, even action wise, it was just kind of a lot of stuff happened, but it didn't feel like much happened. If that makes any sense, Mike, I mean, I, I definitely think it really does, and I think, and I think, since we are talking broad strokes, we can kind of do a broad strokes kind of what we feel was the problem with this episode, and I and, and we talked about it a little bit when we were ranking our characters, and I think the broad strokes issue here is that Marvel is not very good at writing villains, or or giving villains stakes or reasons. Reasons why we care about them being villains. Or there's too many villains. Like like pick a lane. So in this one, in this one, uh, the scene op- the episode opens up with a with a global repatri- repatriation act commercial blurb. So they're trying to set up why we're not supposed to like the global repatriation act, or they're setting up why the flag smashers don't like the global repatriation act, right? So everybody's coming back. The world set up this this unit, this um, agency to help people come back from being gone. Which, which now that I think about it a little bit more, like, like I think this may be one of those things where where the show painted themselves into a into a corner with making everybody leave and then everybody come back. It was great for it to tie up Infinity War and um, Endgame. But it really does create a lot of issues that, if you think about, really would change a lot of policies and things. So that's that's kind of what we're supposed to feel from the Flag Smashers. We open up and they are, again, stealing supplies, um, trying to make life better for those who are displaced, which in and of itself is not a bad thing. You'd want people to help those but but obviously they're doing it outside of the law. They're stealing, they're killing, they're raiding and pillaging and plundering. They're taking things that really aren't theirs. Um, well, one of the things also but, as, we talk, we, as we talk about the Flag Smashers, because they try to show like Carly Monaghan, Montague, I don't even know what her last name is there. But um, they try to show her like sympathetic, like, oh, uh-huh. she's playing soccer with the kids and this person is dying and we don't know if like the person is dying because they didn't have access to the medicine, but also they stole a bunch of medicine. So couldn't they just given her the medicine? Is it a thing like, well, Oh, if we would have had the medicine sooner, or we also don't know if Carly was part of Well, no, she, she didn't get blipped out. Cause she was like, they knew what it was like. They knew what yeah. it was like. So, so I'm not really like sure. Like, did she, why did she die and why does this death in particular make her like go like all the way to the other side because if she stole the vaccines she would have she wouldn't have died i don't know so i'm i'm really well, confused and, on that part and but... there's some dialogue between all the flag smashers saying she wants to see you now and go see her like is she was she like the original flag smasher was she the person who started it all and kind of indoctrinated everybody is it is it simply just carly's mom and if so, the show doesn't seem to care. So why should we? Yeah, because one of the things as we as we jump all over the place because we're not doing a super deep dive. 
when they raid a whole stash and take a bunch of food and they're like, you've been sitting on these things for a long time, all the Flag Smashers tie up the people. And these are, I assume, people that are part of the um, GR, or GRC or GRA, whatever it's called. So they yeah. tie them up and they put them in this building. And when they go to leave, Carly blows the building up. Mm-hmm. And one of the guys is like, what did you do? And Carly's line is, and this is, I hate this in every single thing. She says, this is the only language they understand. Yeah. So she killed all these people. And now it's like, all right, now I guess we're just killers. And we went from this group that like Sam was like, okay, they are doing good. Maybe they're doing good. And now it's like, nope, now we're just killing people. So now when we thought we had like, okay, maybe they are going to turn out to be sympathetic or interesting. You just nope. blew up and murdered a bunch of people. So I don't know how you, you know, make that like, Oh, I guess this is what we're doing now. And yeah. since we've been talking about, you know, like how do you make interesting characters? I don't, I, this isn't how you do it. Like Thanos was interesting because we knew he was like, he was a murderer from the beginning. His, his idea was interesting and people were like, well, maybe because he like, Hey, I come from a planet where this is what happened and we got too greedy. And if there was less people, it wouldn't have happened. So that was his thing. And even though we knew he was bad, like we never thought he was good. We never thought anything Thanos was doing was like, oh, he could be a good guy. It's like, no, he's a bad guy. This is his motivation. And we have no idea what the motivations for the Flag Smashers are. We'll see. And then, and then again, just to, just to keep going on Thanos, like after he did what he was going to do, he stopped, right? He retired. He peaced out. He went, yeah, he was like, all right, I did what I did. Now I can live on my farm, right? So so even though that's like psychotic, like he had his motives. He knew what he was doing. He accomplished what he did. And then he was like, all right, I'm done. For now, all we see is these flag smashers. They're murderers. They're thieves. They all have super serum, super soldier serum. And and they talk a little bit about that, that that yeah, it made our veins bleed, not bleed, it made our veins burn and it was terrible, but now we have it. Um, and 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 obviously, since we're superheroes now, we have to use our powers for evil because that's what you do. Because that's the only language right? that people understand. Because that's, that's the only language that people understand. Um, so I'm pretty convinced that right before the writers wrote this episode, they watched... Um, oceans 12 yeah and decided you know what we have to have a really cool prison escape you know um, what i'm seeing i for this. am a sucker for prison escape scenes this <laughs> prison escape scene it was it was basic it was simple um bucky's explaining to sam as it's happening which which i always love it when they i always like it when they direct things like that someone's explaining the thing that's happening and then it just happens um, this is definitely a better prison escape scene than we got from the Mandalorian. I didn't, didn't care that much for that prison escape scene. But as we get this, you know, Bucky's like, yo, we got to go get Zemo. We break Zemo out. Zemo's like, hey, thanks. Um, this also shows like the prowess of Bucky still as an infiltrator. He was able to mm-hmm. get um, Zemo a card without Zemo even knowing. Busted him out. Then Zemo's like, hey, Or Sam's, Bucky, no, I'm getting all my people mixed up. Bucky's like, there's the superhero (laughs) serum out there. We got to stop it. Zemo's like, yo, like, that's my jam. That's what I do. I stop people with the superhero serum. So he's like, let's do this. He's like, hey, I'm rich. My old butler has been, like, just waiting. I'm a a baron. Yeah. And, like, he was a baron before the Avengers. I, I guess it's insinuated that it happened in Sokovia, that he was a baron over in Sokovia. And he has a lot of money. He's got a lot of cars. His old butler's just been like waiting apparently on the plane for Zemo to like get out. Poor guy's yeah. older than dirt. He like turned into dust um, for sure during the blip. Or he would like, he might have turned into <laughs> dust and no one knew that he blipped out. So he's like, hey, we got money. Let's go over here. We'll go to Madripoor. We'll get into these costumes. We'll go find Shelby. Because if we find Shelby, we can find out where the serum's coming from. Um, they go talk to Shelby, a bunch of guns bunch of you know people shooting at each other sam messes everything up shelby's shelby's another one off and then again right the comedic all right i'm supposed to be this really hard dude who is playing this role as someone and what is going to happen obviously at this exact time because of course it happens my sister's gonna call me. maybe just like put your phone on vibrate like who does not have their phone who? on vibrate 
who doesn't have their phone on silent at all times anyway? Agreed. Like that's that's a weird thing. Like I'm surprised our phones still come with ringers. So anyway, um, there's a fight, and then Sharon pops up, saves them, takes them to her place because she's got a really nice place. She's saying she's been on the run. She like peaced out, went to Madripoor as soon as possible. No one came back for her. Everyone just left her there. No one did anything and, for him. And and this actually bugs me, right? This this bugs me that that this is what happened after all that she's done for a shield be the avengers right like like captain america isn't gonna let sharon carter go without right that's not what he does he's gonna make sure because at not not only is it peggy's niece but it's also it was also teased that that could be a relationship, right? Yeah, because they were like, um, kissed be- under the before, bridge. Yeah, before Cap knew that he was going to be able to go back in time, right? We had some of the best, again, this is going back to Ultron, The best, some of the best scenes were when Sam and Bucky were watching Cap finally make a move and, like, you know, get what he ought to be getting, you know, have some life that that he missed out on. Moving and it on, was, yeah. And then all of a sudden, and, and this is what bugs me though, Steve, is that Sharon's like, you know what? Instead of going back and like doing what Peggy would have done and like, hey, this is what it is. This is what I did. What are you going to do? She's like, ah, man, I guess I better go steal some art. That's that's pretty much what my skill set is. Um, I better go to Tortuga and commandeer a, a pirate crew and you know be a bad guy and i'm like this doesn't make sense yeah it's very like, weird it's like it, just it's out of I, and i don't know like maybe we just didn't understand her no she was like fury trusted her to watch steve she was like the only one that steve trusted she's the only one that like stuck her neck out and it's like yeah see you later like good luck with madri four while we're over here watching the so, hudson bay and watching dolphins and whales come into the bay so so the big thing that they're doing is they're like she's like i had to steal the shield and and sam's wings in ultron to get him to you and then i was on the run but but ultimately it led to the entire world coming back but i'm still on the run like if, if bucky could get pardoned for everything uh-huh. that he did like why and she like she says a line she's like well you're still following the stars and stripes so maybe she's disenfranchised but yeah it just like things don't add up like and it's it's just and weird it, it's like okay i guess th- it is weird and doing, again it's, it's just what we're bad doing. marvel writing because because again we're gonna find out because because the big question is like the episode is titled the power broker right and and do we really know who the power broker is because then the question is, well, is Sharon the power broker? Because there's this whole thing where, where they meet a scientist in a lab who who actually was working on the super serum, blipped out, came back, had to go to Madripoor to finish, and that's where the serum came from. And that's where Bucky and Sam traced the serum. So they get rid of him, Zemo does, because of course Zemo does, because he's the serum exterminator, because reasons. Again, well, I, one least, off character. You at played your role. I'm going to shoot you. Lab explodes. At least Zemo was following his his character arc, though. Like that's something I guess that that's Zemo true. would have done. He wants that. I thing guess gone. that's true. He has to get rid of this guy in order to do that. So outside the lab battle that's going on between Zemo, Sam, the scientist, and Bucky, outside that area, Sharon is handling business, taking out a bunch of assassins because. There's now a bounty put on uh, put on Bucky and Sam. So she's taking care of everybody. We think she's operating alone, right? We think that she's doing what she's doing because she was promised a pardon by Sam for helping him out. And and then Sharon gets in this in the back of a car. Like she's definitely the boss of this place. So is Sharon the power broker? And if she is. Again, Marvel, you're having a hard time writing bad guys because if she makes the flip to bad guy in this, I I will be able to roll my eyes so far back in my head 
that I will snap my optic nerve. I agree. And I think that's like one of the reasons why I just didn't like care for this episode at all, or even like the direction that it's going. So John Walker and Lamar are not in this very much. They're in the beginning, they're at the end, and their idea to track the serum down is just to follow Bucky and Sam, and that was their big plan. And, like, with three episodes left, we have a lot of bad guys. We have potentially Sharon, we have Zemo, we have John, um, and then we have the Flag Smashers, who are all... They, they might not be the bad guys, but they are definitely antagonists. We'll even throw in the therapist in there. We'll throw in the doctor. Um, right. And there's, there's a lot going on, and, you know... Um, Bucky's friend that that he killed his son like we still don't have closure on that maybe that'll just be at the end but there's just a lot of moving parts now and maybe I'm not necessarily saying I want an easy to follow show but I do want something to keep me interested like but after WandaVision you want an easy to follow show like well like that thing took like, effort to watch like and I, and I don't mind that so much but I do want characters to at least I don't want it just to be like lost all the time where it's like you're questioning yeah. everyone's motives. Who is this? Is everyone bad? Is everyone good? Like, like the good guys are supposed to be the good guys and the bad guys are supposed to be bad guys. But you know, Zemo's rich. So he's a bad guy. And Sharon was like, yeah, I pieced out. And like the only interesting thing like I, that I took from this episode was like Sam being like, maybe I should have just destroyed it. Maybe I should have destroyed the shield because it's yeah. causing a lot of pain to everyone. It 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 had a big effect. It saved a lot of people, and that was Bucky's points. Like that that shield meant a lot to a lot of people, and it's also like has this destructive wake, you know, for Sharon and for all these other people behind it. So, it was, like, was Sam gonna throw it into Mordor? Like, just destroy the shield, you know? Steve, that that would have been a better show at this point. And man, I would. I would I would wait in line for those tickets to watch Sam and Bucky travel the the trail to Mordor as as so who would be the big three there? It would have to be um So who would be the big three from the Marvel Universe as as it currently stands to be as able to Gimli, do what Legolas, they did? and Aragon? Yeah, who would be those who would be the, um, the trio? Tom Holland would be one of them. It'd be um, it'd be Spider Man, Cumberbatch. It'd, it'd be Doctor Who. Oh, that would be funny. It'd be Spider Man, Doctor Strange, and, Chris and... Pratt, Star Lord. No, he's no. pieced out. It'd have to be someone from Earth. From so Vision, Vision maybe. Yeah, I'd we'll have to it. get back to you on that because we're gonna have to think about that and do like You're an right. inventory be on who's there. Because Bucky... it'd have to be like Professor Hulk or someone. Yeah, yeah, that would be lame. Because Bucky and Sam are like the best part of the show. And they just uh -huh. haven't been featured, especially in this episode. It just wasn't – it wasn't what I expected. And I guess what we got was just kind of disappointing to me, especially because, like, yeah. Flag Smashers, ooh. And they are like, oh, maybe they're nice. Like, no, we just murder people. Like, don't even yeah. worry about that, guys. You don't even have to worry about, like, gray area. No morally gray area here. We just blew up all these people. Because, you yeah. know what, the GRC, they're also trying to help people. They're trying to help people that came back from the blip. Eh. I mean, they are. They've got all this stuff. And maybe. And you know what? The government is never good at doing anything. Anything? Like, is that what anything. they're trying to tell us? No, and it, like that's. it's never good at doing anything. So do they have good intentions? Sure. Do they suck at it? Yeah, they do. But also, I don't know, like maybe don't murder them. <laughs> so i don't know this episode was pretty disappointing for me i hope that things change around on friday um i'll update my kill count because a lot of people died in this episode also but maybe we'll have more time next time when the week right. is a little bit less stressful so mike that's all i have any predictions for what happens like how many more bad guys are going to show up in episode four three episodes left man three episodes that's it three episodes left and i'm like man I hope I hope something happens. I think in episode four, Bucky and John fight. That's my prediction for episode four. Episode four. Some of the trailers that I see popping up are Sam has the shield and it and it almost looks like they're on Hawkeye's farm. Yeah, but I don't know how much of that is just kind of like remember for 
and Infinity War, they had a bunch of scenes that were shot for the trailers that never really happened just to throw people never off. Never really made it. Yeah. yeah. That's what I'm guessing. So anyway, everyone, we if you st- if you stuck with us for this shorter episode, we appreciate it. We appreciate all of you. We hope you have a good week. Be safe. Be kind to each other. Try to make the world a better place. However you do that, we hope you are able to do that well. So that's all I'm going to say as I push this button. Uh, yes, chatter. The police are gaining. Increasing speed. Thank you for listening to the Freelancer Rusted. Codex. Thanks for a hanging podcast out. brought to you by the Shut Up Hopefully and Respawn Network. Hopefully going good in Japan. Follow us at Haven't Freelancer much Codex about on Twitter or, or how Twitch. COVID's going over there. Send Hopefully emails to freelancercodex at gmail.com or voice messages to anchor.fm slash freelancercodex slash message. We wish to thank all of our Patreons. We are grateful for you all. All right, end the stream. Click.